eight months after my son was born, I lost the vision in my right eye. And that was the precursor to, you know, seeking the medical diagnosis because I had to figure out what was happening. And uh, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. And I can laugh about it now, but it was so not funny then. Welcome to Define You Radio, the place to be for real talk and real tips to help you define your personal and professional life. Class is in session with your host, the Southern Belle of Bold, Valencia Griffin Wallace. Pens and papers ready. Class is now in session. Hey, kings and queens. It's your girl, Valencia Griffin Wallace. And class is in session today with Susan Schatzer of UnlockingYourLimitlessLife.com. Not only is Susan a 10-time number one best-selling author, she also executive produces and hosts a globally syndicated TV series called Unlocking Your Limitless Life. Her mission is to catapult those who are our best kept secrets with a vision, mission, or message into mass consciousness. Now, before we get into today's session, make sure you go over to ValenciaGWallace.com and secure your spot for the move retreat happening in Jacksonville, Florida, September 27th through the 29th. Now, let's go ahead and welcome Susan to the show. Welcome, Miss Susan, to the show. Hi, Miss Susan. How are you doing today? Great. Thank you, Valencia, so much for the incredible introduction and the gift and contribution you are to the world. I'm going to start <laughs> demanding people recognize that I am a gift to this <laughs> world. That's right. And contribution. Yes, definitely. You have a very interesting story. I was kind of looking over, you know, of course, your bio and some different things about you. But I want the audience to kind of get to know you. So just give us a snapshot of Susan in the past. Yeah, how far back, Valencia, would you like me to go? (laughs) (laughs) I've got 50 years of story and information I can share. But I think I know the part that you're referring to. It's the part where you just have a total, like life as you know it, like is totally just the floor is pulled out from under you. Like you receive some information or you have an experience. Is that sort of where you'd like for me to start? Yes, but specifically about being diagnosed with a a chronic illness. Yeah, it was eight months after I gave birth and I had gone misdiagnosed for 10 years before it. Um, and eight months after my son was born, I lost the vision in my right eye. And that was the precursor to, you know, seeking the medical diagnosis because I had to figure out what was happening. And, uh, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and I can laugh about it now, but it was so not funny then, but really, and it happened, I, you know, and I called my mom and my mom was in the medical field, Valencia. And so I said, you know, I've got this like, you know, spot and I can't really see out of my right eye and, you know, it's kind of painful. And I said, I'm thinking it's just like, I just popped like a little blood vessel or something, you know, and my body just needs to absorb it. So that's what I'm thinking. You know, I'm, I have like no concept that this could be like a really big deal. So I end up in the, you know, I kind of emergency center and it just so happens God being as good as he is actually had the ER doctor there. He was a neuro ophthalmologist and he kind of knew. So he sent me for an MRI and that's when, um, I got the call and uh, the neuro ophthalmologist says, well, you have a 51% chance of having multiple sclerosis. Mm. And I was like, oh, okay. Like had no idea what that was. I go, let me go get a piece of paper so I can write this down. So so I leave the doctor. I I go in the house, I get a piece of paper. I'm like, so can you spell that for me? I'm having him spell it out. Still having no idea what this means. So I said, okay, well, you know, let me give you the name of my pharmacy and you can just call in the prescription and then I'll, I'll go pick it up later today. You know, like, so what antibiotic do you think I need for this? Still having no clue you know, that this was life-changing, that the sclerosis meant scarring. It meant I had lesions on the brain and the spine that, 
you know, this like was impacting, you know, my life. And it explained a lot of the mysteries that I had been having. And it was at that point when I got a call from my primary physician that said, hey, we want you in the hospital, you know, don't even go, you know, we've already checked you in, you need to be here for five days, they'll pack a bag because you need some steroid infusion to bring down the inflammation that you have on your brain. And I was like, oh, full stop. Like I have an eight month old. I'm like, my husband at the time like works full time. My closest family lived eight states away. And I realized, you know what? I'm in an abusive marriage. Mm. And it was one of those things where like, single parenthood, divorce, chronic illness, trial drug study. So I'm receiving chemo and steroids, right? And, you know, the fact that I'm still here on the planet is, is one of those moments where you, I came, it was like, look, I'm either going to a third world country to get a stem cell transplant because I would wake up tired, I'd go to bed exhausted, and I would be in tears all day, um, just not able to handle anything or take myself off the planet. Like those were my two options. And I just said, God, you got to show up. It's got to be now. And it has to be in a really big way. And he did. And it was, and I'm still here now, 16 years later. Well, congratulations on still being here. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you very much. Thank you. A while ago, well, I say a while ago, but it was a couple of weeks ago, I think we did a I did a show with a young lady who has a MD. Muscular dystrophy. Uh Yes. And I I just said, I'm a, I told her, I was like, I'm going to just say MD from now on because, you know, it's quite a, a tongue twister, but what I recognize in her story and yours is that misdiagnosis, then all of a sudden out of the blue, almost, um, now, let me ask you, is MS genetic? No. The shock value, the emotional value of being a, a mom, um, like I only could imagine the total, almost total mental breakdown. Yeah, that- it was a full collapse. I realized I was in like a lot of trouble when I had 19 doctor's appointments in one month within 30 days. And, um, you know, I was, you know, I had a lot of panic and fear um, that went along and there was depression and anxiety that went along with all of this Um, and the sleep deprivation because I was still breastfeeding. So it was, you know, one of those things where, you know, your whole life is turned upside down. And I remember I used to be a Mary Kay uh, sales director and, um, you know, top 2%, a lot of Queen's Court of sales and rings and prizes and, you know, sashes and all that kind of stuff and crowns. And I remember sitting there in my office one day looking at all these pictures and I could not recognize myself Mm. in the pictures. I'm like, and I remember my dad sitting next to me. I remember looking and saying, you know, I know that's me, but I don't remember that. Like, I don't recognize that. Like, my diagnosis was a, a defining moment for me um, in having and requiring to choose for myself. Um, and it was at that point that, you know, I, you know, had to choose what was going to work for me. And being with um, my husband at the time, who was, you know, verbally and emotionally abusive, you know, he was you know, not faithful, you know, he was cheating, he was lying, he was, had hidden credit card debt, it was, you know, just surmounting on all of this. And it was on top of, you know, having the symptoms I did on top of, you know, not being able to work. I remember having a port in my arm for treatment, needing to drive across town to pick up a guest, to then drive over to a meeting, to then drive a guest home, to then come back to my house, you know, close to 11 o'clock at night, you know, for Mary Kay going, I just can't do this. I, I cannot do this anymore. Like, I'm still trying to live my life the way it was before this, that this something has to change. And it was a complete thing. And, you know, honestly, Valencia, um, it was one of those things where, 
you know, my husband at the time, he got called on the carpet with, you know, the cheating and whatnot. And it was just one of those things where, you know, look, do you think you're addicted to lying? And um, his response was yes. And I said, well, that's not something I can help you with. You know, we went to, we did a therapy kind of a thing, you know, with someone and, um, you know, basically they said, look, you're narcissistic and you're, you know, yeah, you're manipulative and you have all these things. They said, and it's not something that you're going to be able to get through quickly. Like we're going to be have to work with you over time. And so he didn't like the diagnosis or liked what they were saying. So he said, I'm just never going back. And, you know, it was from that point to where it's like, you know what, I didn't think my life was going to be this way. And I didn't think I'd have to give up so much stuff. And his point of view was, hey, you know, it doesn't matter what kind of a day I have, it will never be as bad as yours. So I'm leaving. And he decided to tell me while I was visiting my family with our son in Massachusetts over the phone, which I was like, really? <laughs> he says, yeah, when you get back, I'm, I'm going to be leaving. And I said, okay, look, I have 30 days to when I am come back to when my parents are coming down for my next treatment, which was my birthday month. I always get treated on my birthday for the infusion, for the trial drug study. And I said, look, can you just stay for 30 days and help me out with our son? I said, because I'm not physically able to do a very good job here. And he said, no, I'm not. I'm leaving. And as soon as you get back, and he did, he picked us up at the airport. He came back at the house. He said goodbye and he walked out. Mm. That was it. And and he walked out the month before my son turned two. So it was one of those things that was like, God, really? <laughs> like, wow. like, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. And it. That's, that's a crazy, it, uh, roughly little two year span, give or take, of between diagnosis. Um, to the end of your marriage and most women, um, and I say women, even though, you know, guys, I know you guys go through like a lot except giving birth. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> but that, you know, in, in, you know, that's like a whole lot of ground shaking, earth shattering things that you experienced in a two year window. So really you didn't get a chance to recover. It was kind of like one thing after the other. Yeah. And we went on for a knockdown drag out, you know, divorce thing because he quote unquote wanted custody. And, you know, my son had never been with anybody else because I was a stay at home mom and we were a two family income. So he had to work and he didn't have family that could be with our son. So why the judge would never give him, you know, full custody, you know, at that point. And, you know, this was back in 2006. So, so many of the laws have changed since then. Um, But at that point it was like, no, you know, this child only knows his mom. So we're not going to give him to the dad to have somebody else raise him. You know what I mean? And she's going to be home anyways, because, you know, she has a chronic illness. And uh, so it was really, really interesting how that uh, came about. And then there was tons of, you know, judgment placed on us and him. And it was, you know, what a deadbeat dad and how can you walk out like that? And she just needed your help. And, you know, you couldn't just stay for 30 days. You know what I mean? Like, what kind of person are you like just a human being how could you do that to somebody else like and they they're asking for your help and you married her this is the mother of your child you know what I mean and and then it got worse like you know till death do you part and in sickness and in health and how can you go against you know God the church and you know everything else because we were both you know grew up Catholic and um and so there was tons of judgment from family and friends and like you know everybody around us and it was quite a few years later that one of my mentors actually said to me, you know, Susan, you know, truth, is this what you were asking for? Hmm. Truth, was that what you were asking for? And I sat back, Valencia, and I couldn't say yes, and I couldn't say no. 
And what I discovered was I was actually asking for a way out. Like, you know how your thoughts, what you think about, you talk about, what you talk about, you bring about? Yeah. Well, I wasn't talking about it because I didn't want it to be true. And, but I was thinking about it because I remember like, because he was so abusive that I would do everything I could during the day and leading up to the point which he would get home. So there would be nothing that he could be angry with, Mm. you know, like he was just a very angry, mean individual and verbal and body language and all that kind of stuff. And it was at that point that I realized that, yeah, what? Because our point of view, this was the other thing I learned at the same time, our point of view, Valencia, creates our reality. So my point of view was, I got to get out of this. You know, I, and with Catholicism, you, you know, they don't actually recognize divorce. So having, you know, parents and grandparents, and I mean, my family goes, we're Italian Catholic and we're, you know, our... Our ancestors, our families, like they live right across the street from the Vatican. <laughs> hmm. They they can look out their window and watch the Pope, you know, kind of like, hey, waving back and forth. Like that's that's the you know in depth um, connection we had with that. And what popped up was, you know, this is what I had been looking for. And so look what I created. I created this and it was something I could not and would not accept and would not acknowledge. Like who creates a chronic illness? Like what kind of person would do that? And then when I got to thinking about it, I'm like, hey, what could you not be judged for? Hmm. Sickness, right? If you're sick, you're sick. Right. right. If you're ill, you're ill. You know, if somebody leaves you, they left you. So I could not be judged for the disintegration of the, of the marriage. And I'm really, and it was just a little while after I was willing to acknowledge that, that I sat back and I said, wow, like he's choosing for him. Hmm. Like staying with us, like was not going to work for him. So he was choosing for him and it allowed me to be the parent with our son that I really, truly wanted to be as a parent, the, the kind of parent, the style of parenting that I would not have been able to do had he been in our life. And my child, my son, you know, also the same thing, like we, he's 16 now and um, he's dual enrollment. He's going to be going to college in the fall. And we talk about it now, like, you know, if dad was still here, you know, would you be able to have the personality you have? And, you know, both of us have a resounding no, you know, we would, he would not have been able to be the kid and have the experiences that he's had, you know, with me as a parent, with him, with the freedom, with that, had his dad been a part of it. So we're very grateful and I am so thankful. And I've told him this, you know, I am so glad that you did leave. I'm so glad that you did walk out. Yes, it was really hard. Yes, I hated your guts. <laughs> <laughs> yes, everyone wanted to kill you for me. Um, but in retrospect, now looking back, it's like, look, that's, that's exactly what and how this all got created. So, you know, I, I look at it as a win, you know, as much as I thought it was he freed himself in one sense, but he also freed you because yeah. from from that past, you were able to create now and, you know, kind of, you know, free yourself from the responsibility, the judgment, what have you. Um, thank you for sharing, for sharing that because a lot of women, I think, get caught up in that woe is me, but you use that and turned it into something. So what is unlocking your limitless life? What is it and what does that mean? Thank you so much. It is, it's been like a pull for me. And I was gifted at a very early age that my target, you know, we have a purpose, a mission, a message in life. Valencia, kind of like define you radio. Like, let's 
Let's define you. Like, who are you? Who are you being? How are you showing up in the world? The same kind of thing was happening with me. It was like, find a need and fill it. And that's what I was given at a very early age. So everything I did in life was to find a need and fill it. And everything I did would be between job and moving and relocating and careers and whatnot and education was to find a need um, and then fill it. And then I would do that for like four or five years and realize, okay, yeah, this isn't it. <laughs> it's going to be something else. So unlocking your limitless life is where I'm able to bring, um, I call them the best kept secrets. And really it's you, it's your neighbor, it's your friend, it's your alternative um, specialist, whoever you have. It's someone who has a vision, a mission, and a message. And they, they just don't have the exposure. Like they don't have, um, no one can find them. Do you know what I mean? What they have available um, is what everyone has now, which is what I call blockbuster video. <laughs> mm, now yeah. blockbuster video went out of business because they didn't keep up with the technology and the streaming platforms you know that are happening and so there's a shift that's already happened and it's here and we're on the cusp of it like we're on the top of the wave and we are like on our surfboards and we were riding the big one and it's streaming it's roku it's our video is going to apple tv and Amazon Fire Stick, and we're on apps on your phone. So I'm able to take people who normally would have to pay $25,000 for three minutes to get on the Today Show or Good Morning America, and then they're gone, to taking them to a digital platform where we film four shows, each of them about eight minutes, and we place them on these global platforms. We have 90 plus platforms where all of their information is available and we actually teach them how to do business differently. It's like the new, the new wave. It's what coming. It's like the Netflix before it was the blockbuster. It's the internet before we had the yellow pages. <laughs> mm, I love it. I love it. And I think a lot of TV people, quote unquote, like networks and those things are realizing somebody like me, I, I stream only like I cut the cord on the cable a long time ago. Yes. Everything I could find is on uh, Netflix, Amazon Prime, yes. my Fire Stick, YouTube, yes. whatever. And I think um, it's like eventually TV networks, like those, you know, networks from back in the day that you got to pay an arm and a thigh to get on. Yes. Eventually they will be like Blockbuster. And, they and no they already are. are. Yeah. yeah. Right. They're already like so Fox News and the CW and ABC, NBC, um, AMC, like they're all on Roku. They all have their own streaming channels on there. They're just still also on the cable network because it's still hanging on. It's like the dial up to the high speed <laughs> with our internet. You know what I mean? Like we're making that leap right now. So I'm taking, you know, everybody, you know, who would like to have be featured on a global platform, I'm taking you there. And that's what Unlocking Your Limitless Life is all about. I love that. I love that. And congratulations in, um, in, in the way that you found the need and you're, you're feeling it. And it's more about other people's voice but your purpose, if that makes sense. Yeah, my mission is to raise the vibrational frequency on the planet and mainstream media is not how it's going to happen. Yeah. You know, it's going to be the people who are consciously awake, who have conscious awareness, who are out creating this reality and just getting them to places, you know, so literally anybody anywhere in the world at any time can access these shows, people's, mm -hmm. people's content. And then it never goes away. Like it's always there. It's always available. Like it's unbelievable. <laughs> I, I love it. Cause I hate it. If you think about traditional TV, you're locked down to time. Um, then I even went to DVR and stuff, but you gotta remember to say and everything else. And eventually it became more of, a headache. Yes. And costly. I'm like, 
y'all are dying. How can you still go up on rates? Yes. So, um, yeah, it is. It's archaic. It's like the blockbuster. And I use these examples, blockbusters and yellow pages, because it wasn't that long ago. Right. That we had that and how far we've come. And it's not going to be that long to where we're solely on a streaming situation and receiving everything. Right now, everyone reads their email on their phone. That's the most, uh, you know, the highest place right there. And let me just shoot this past you too, Valencia. Get this. So Google bought YouTube, right? Yes. And I love it. Yeah. So, but let me share this with you because a lot of people don't know about this. So right now, where do most of people have most of their video content? YouTube. And Facebook, right? Mm -hmm. Well, gets which two places have no customer service, have no live chat, have no phone number to reach them? Facebook. And YouTube. Oh, really? Yes. So what happens is you actually don't have control over your content. Have you ever got put in Facebook jail? <laughs> no, but I know plenty of uh, people that have been. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. So, and it's difficult to, you can't just like call somebody up or, you know, get someone on the phone to like fix this for you. It doesn't happen that way. Like you have to serve your time. Um, and they all make the decisions. Like we all woke up on the morning, January 1st, 2019, and Facebook had decided without telling us, without alerting us, without sharing it whatsoever, that they were eliminating people in our groups, in our Facebook yes. groups. So we lost a lot of people. Yes. And they could have very easily said, hey, reach out to them. Ask them if they'd like to be uh, still connected. Ask them if they'd like to opt in. You know, send them a private. Nothing, nothing. We weren't. It's like boom, and and your whole group shifted like overnight. It's like, mm -hmm. hey, happy new year! Now you have half as many people as you thought. Yeah. You in and your group. Another thing I I heard read somewhere. Um, not sure how how true it is or not, but I've noticed it in a few numbers. If you or on Facebook Live and you say, um, you know, share the video, so on and so forth, that they will cut like the number of views or the number of reach or something, something in that way. Because one of the things I always say, you know, like, love, share the video. And I noticed after I read that article, like those views aren't what they used to be when I do my Facebook Lives. And I was like, oh. You know, I don't know if that's true or not. That's just an article I've read, but you know, anybody could write an article and base it on whatever, but a lot of times there's some truth to yeah. that stuff. Yes. Yeah. It's, in it's interesting. So uh, one of the bonuses with what you're talking about is on Roku, Roku partnered with Cha-Ching um, and they're a China-based television company. And Cha Chang makes physical TV sets. So, mm -hmm. do you remember the Gateway Computer? It was the cow in the box, and yeah. they put Microsoft software on their computers. So everyone was like, "Yeah, you got to get the Gateway Computer, get the cow, because you don't have to pay extra for the software and upload it. It's already included, you know, on the computer." Well, Roku did the same thing. Roku partnered up with Chang, and now Roku is automatically on every smart TV that comes out of China here. And in the fall of this past year, Roku surpassed Google for clickable media links. So because Google owns YouTube, YouTube is not all that in a bag of chips any longer. Mm. That is very interesting. I've learned some, some techni technical business stuff. Um, so thank you for sharing that. I've taken so many notes, which is why I called show classes in session and everybody knows to have their pens and papers ready. I wanted to touch on something really quick about our greatest possibility being locked in our biggest problem. If you could touch on that. Sure. It's 
where whatever your biggest problem is hidden inside your biggest problem truly is your greatest possibility. And I work with people on a private and small group setting. So I'll just use my story, quote unquote, as an example, uh, because my biggest problem was being diagnosed, uh, being cheated on, being in an abusive marriage, my closest family being eight states away, me needing to be in a trial drug study, losing the vision in my right eye and having an eight month old like bam, right? Hidden inside that big problem was my greatest possibility. And my greatest possibility was me being willing to acknowledge that I created that and actually allowing myself to um, be willing to look at my ex in, you know, a framework of being in gratitude. And gratitude is the highest vibrational frequency that we can be on the planet right now. And gratitude is just below God consciousness. And that gratitude frequency is the highest one you can have. Anything else below that drops your vibrational frequency. So anger, rage, fury, hate, blame, shame, regret, guilt. I had all that running. (laughs) And what that does is that lowers your vibrational frequency. And those are the bottom. Those are the lowest ones. And then they start going up from there. So the more you can spend time in gratitude for everything, for your chronic illness, for the car accident, for your roof having to be replaced, for the mold you have growing in the back room, for whatever it happens to be, the car accident, literally there is a hidden possibility in there that's your greatest possibility available to you, but it's showing up as your biggest problem and God is there and he's showing you that. So you are able to shift and change that. You no longer need to be frustrated. You no longer need to be angry. There is a possibility that's hidden in there that empowers you to raise your vibrational frequency because my friend, now is the time. Hashtag amen. Yeah, because like like attracts like Valencia here on the planet, right? I, I, I agree. It's yeah. definitely um, you know, being grateful for what you have. And one of the things I tell people is like when I had a raggedy car way back in the day, in my twenties, but when yeah. I had a raggedy car, we I all was, did. <laughs> right. I was grateful for it. I took care of it. You couldn't tell me I wasn't driving a brand new Lexus. And what that did was open up opportunities for for growth. I was grateful for my little apartment. Um, So now I'm grateful for, you know, a house. And I was, you know, and I think people don't realize that, like, be grateful for where you are because it is leading somewhere if you remember that. Yes. You remember that. So, Miss Susan. What is, what's next for you and how can the audience get in touch with you? Well, thank you so much. I would love for you to come visit our shows at unlockingyourlimitlesslife.com. Um, the easiest way to reach me is through Facebook, uh, Susan Schatzer, or you can join our Facebook group, Unlocking Your Limitless Life uh, Facebook group there. And I know, like, and trust that if you're someone who has a vision, a mission, and a message, and you are ready and would like to go global, you would like to have that presence um, on that kind of scale with your message, your vision, um, and your mission, then definitely positively reach out. Let's get that party started for you. Yay. You guys (laughs) get your hair and makeup ready and make it happen. Definitely get in touch with Miss Susan. Thank you. Actually, we cover that. We, with that's included hair and makeup. Yeah, we include that. It's a done for you. It's all done. We do the social media, email marketing campaign. The only thing that you've got to figure out is what you're going to wear. Yes. You guys, (laughs) it, it is 2019. It is time to show up and show out. Definitely connect with Miss Susan, who has been a great interview. Y'all know class is officially over. Make sure you subscribe to the show. And until next time, remember your past doesn't define you. It gives you definition. And what you do with that is up to you. Thanks for listening to Define You Radio. Make sure you connect with the show at www.defineuradio.com. Pens and papers down. Class dismissed.